So today uh, I want to discuss uh, I love you. Avoiding marriage mistakes. I love you. Avoiding marriage mistakes. Something sisters often find themselves in the midst of. In the scriptures, marriages were arranged by their parents. Right? What, for example, uh, I had a child, he had a child. We say, hey, let's arrange that in time they get married. And of course, that's providing that the child or children live up to their parents' expectations. Okay? We don't have that today in America or throughout the world, as a matter of fact, where our people at in the diaspora, we don't have that. I think Saudi Arabia has that, if I'm not mistaken. Certain nations have that. Some Indian, Pakistan, some of them have that. Uh, but that's phasing out. The white man's slowly phasing that out. So it's difficult to try to pair children up. It can be done, but it is more difficult. So those of us that are coming to the truth, y'all are all adults, and you got your own mindset. And you think you can choose the perfect spouse. But especially the women. They think they can pick. Okay. All right. Uh, as a result of this, we allow courting, not dating. We allow people to court and not date. And you may ask, well, what? Now, neither one of them is biblical. Now, I'm going to say it again. Neither one of them is biblical. But you may ask, so you may ask, what is the difference between courting and dating? Well, courting is you getting to know the woman, the woman getting to know you, and if you go out, you will be chaperoned so that there's no incidentals. Dating is sex without marriage. I'm going to say it again. Dating is sex without marriage. And we've all, back in the day, we've all dated. Brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about. And some of you sisters, you know what we're talking about. We'll take them to the movies. We're not interested in the movie, sister. Let's hide around why we got to sit in the back. Let's just sit in the back. Go in the back. Back row. But I can't see the movie. To hell with the movie. <laughs> then we meet our boys and we go, hey, smell my fingers. <laughs> that's what we did. This is back in the day. I don't know what y'all do today, but that's what we did. We was young. That's what we did. So, dating involves the male and female having sexual relations without marriage. Give me Exodus 22, 16. Let's go there, Exodus 22, 16. Now, like I said, if you've got little kids, the video I'll show, I, I don't advise it for children. So, get your kids out of the room. The book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, and lie with her. Have sex with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Now, that was God's law. Now, that was a sub-law. I'm going to say it again. Or I'll say it like this. That was a statute to marriage. Because marriage was, as we discussed earlier, was arranged by the parents. If you went around that law that the parents arranged, and you went some sideway, whispering in the girl's ear, trying to get with her, and you have sex with her, the law was you must marry her. That's why in the deep south, they had something called shotgun wedding. A shotgun wedding was when the father found out that you was banging his daughter, he made sure you married her. He dragged your black behind to the justice of the peace with his shotgun in hand and made sure you stood there and performed your marriage vows. That's called a shotgun wedding. Give me Deuteronomy 22, 28. That's why when I was young, when, we, when girls would disappear and go down south for long periods of time, we have realized and found out later that they got pregnant. We said, oh, that's why they went down south. Down south was the safety hub to hide your indiscretions. Because the parents in, up north did not want to be embarrassed by their whole daughter being pregnant without marriage. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin. Now, this is the same thing that we just read in Exodus twenty two sixteen. Go ahead. Which is not betrothed. She's not engaged. And lay hold on her. And lay hold on her. And lie with her. And have sex with her. And they be found. And, and they be found. Meaning it's been discovered 
that they were having consensual sex. That's what it means, and they be found. Notice, because she wasn't screaming, ah, get off. Uh-uh. It says, and they be found. Go ahead. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. There was a judgment for doing that. You had to give the damsel's father 50 shekels. That's about $450 today, U.S. Go ahead. And she shall be his wife. Watch this. Because he hath humbled her, uh-huh. he may not put her away all his days. That was the next judgment. Not only did you have to pay 50 shekels, which is about $450, you could not put her away all your days. There's nothing she could do. Now, you better pray she wasn't a demon. There's nothing she could do for you to put her away. Nothing. So, why don't the BHI, the black Hebrew Israelites, who practice allegedly, uh, all these sexual indiscretions out there. Why don't they apply that law? You got to give the damsel's father $450 and you may not put away all your days. Okay? Why don't they, why don't they practice that? They don't believe in the Bible. A lot of them, I'd say, I'd say about 8 out of 10 of them are not, are not sincere. I won't say all of them, but I'll say about 8 out of 10 of them are not sincere. All that polygamy stuff is garbage. Because they pass women around like Skittles. Have sex with her today, she piss him off, he cuts her loose, she go to the next man. Then he, she piss him off, she go to the next, oh, what the hell is this? Like damn romper room. Right, that's why they don't want to get the paperwork. Right. You understand? That's why they don't want to get that. So let's discuss the importance of proving a friend. I want to discuss the importance of proving a friend. Give me Ciroc 6. Proving a friend and trying spirits is the same thing. I'm going to say it again. Proving a friend and trying spirits is the same thing. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. You brothers, you want a friend, you better prove him. Sisters, you want a friend, you better prove her. Now that's, they call that plutonic relationships. Plutonic meaning friends. But the same principles that apply for a platonic relationship also apply for a romantic relationship involving marriage. Prove him. Prove her. Prove them. It's the same principle. Look at 1 John 4 and 1. The book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Beloved. And leave not every spirit, go ahead. but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Notice the next part, but try the spirits. Try them. That means prove them. Prove what they say. Verse 2. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. If you have flesh... You have color. I'm going to say it again. If you have flesh, you have color. So when people say, oh, I believe he came in the flesh, ask him what he looked like. Then you'll, then you'll hear them lie and say, he didn't have no color. They're not confessing that he came in the flesh when they say that. Okay, read. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. That person that says he has no color, that he's all colors, that he's invisible, is not of God. Go ahead. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. That's the spirit of Antichrist. Go ahead. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. So John was explaining to us that spirit of Antichrist is already in the world at his time. He said, try those spirits that say they're of God. So just like you got to try spirits to prove whether or not they are false prophets, the same thing goes in a Plutonic or Romantic relationship i'm gonna say it again you gotta do the it's the same principles for a platonic or, or romantic relationship as it is with a pro, so-called prophet you gotta try them you must prove them go back to sirach the book of sirach chapter six and verse seven and you know why you gotta prove and try them who knows why you gotta prove these spirits try these spirits saying the same thing why do you gotta prove a friend why you got to try spirits? Who can give me the answer? One brother. Go ahead. Stand up. Give me your name. Because not everybody 
they're going to appear righteous, but they're not. They're pretenders. Okay, I'll go with that one a little better. Now, in case y'all didn't know, people lie. People lie. Just, sisters, you ever met a man that lied to you? He promised you the world? And he's a daggone liar. You brothers, too. You know what I'm talking <laughs> She will put. She will send her manager to talk to you. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But people lie. So you got to try them, okay? Now, go, give me 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let me tell you men and you women something. Everybody puts on an act when it comes to relationships. They don't show you the real you. Like, for example, when you meet the sister, you don't burp or fart around her. <laughs> Just for example, you hold that and she holds it in. Oh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> but when she relaxes around you, <laughs> I'm just I'm keeping it real. Read that. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I hope you sisters understand that. It says believe but read it again. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Be be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't be hooked up with unbelievers. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, sisters, something. Some brothers come in, in the doors, not that they believe, but they look at the videos and they go, wow, them sisters at IUIC is lovely. I want to get one of them. And a sister's sitting there, and she wants a good revolutionary man. But you find out he's not revolutionary at all. He's a dud. He's a lump on a log. You get with him, he has no inspiration to go to camp. He don't even want to hand out a damn flyer. And you already laid with him. You're like, well, why ain't you doing something? Go out with the men. Do this, do that. I wanted a revolutionary man. And he says, but I'm not revolutionary at all. <laughs> I just wanted what's between your legs. That's all I wanted. And I got you. Now, sister, you stuck with that lump, that log on a, what is the expression? You don't know. Lump on a log, thank you. Lump on a log. Bishop, uh, uh, the example happened to a sister that came from Canada. You remember? That came from yes. Canada. And I deal with. She's probably the second or third wife, and she did not prove that man. She did not uh, try that man. You know, and she just went right in it because he thought that. Oh, I see. The brother had fringes on. Like, no, nah, you have to prove a friend. That's what Scripture said. Exactly. Get Sirach thirty-seven. In verse 12, Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, and verse 12. The book of Sirach, chapter 37, and verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. So you brothers, you want a, or sisters, you want a plutonic relationship, which is meaning just friends. It says, but be continually with a godly man. You sisters want romance, you want marriage, the same principle applies. Read that again. But be continually with a godly man, whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. That's what you want. Whether it's plutonic or romantic, it's the same principles. Okay? So, 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 so. In order to know whether or not he or she keeps the commandments, you got to observe that person. You must listen to their conversation. And when I say observe, let me explain what I mean when I say observe, sisters. Listen to what I'm about to say. I'm going to help you out. Brothers, I'm going to help you out too. I'm going to start with the sisters first. Sisters talking to a brother. They're outside. Another woman is walking down the street. Now, what Laba's the sister. I'm, to I'm talking to her. But this sister's walking by. And he's like, yeah, sis, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh-huh. And here's the booty. Yeah, the dunk, the dunk. He's like this. Yeah, sis, you know, uh-huh, uh-huh. 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 What would you say? What would you say? You don't want to get a dude like that. And some of your sisters seen that. And you brothers. Here go the sister. You talking to her. You take out your wallet. She's trying to look in your wallet. Watch that. <laughs> you go to the bathroom. You leave your wallet on the table or something. You go to the restroom and you come back. She open it up. What's in there? How much money he got? Or... She's just looking, well, brothers don't mind this, but brothers like when sisters look at how big their feet are. Brothers like that thing. Okay, but 
that ain't wifey material. I'm telling y'all now, that ain't wifey material at all. Because there's going to be a nooker that walk by with bigger feet than yours. Now what? <laughs> Give me Sirach 6 and 7 again. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. Y'all sisters said I'd be not hasty to credit Yeah, he kept the commandments. He went to a uh, uh, congregation on Sabbath day. Sister, there's more to the commandments than that. You know, in Sunday school, many of us went to Sunday school. We were little black demons in church. We went to church every Sunday and cut up. Mama, I got to go to the bathroom. We had, a, we had a cue for all the kids to go to the bathroom. We go, Mama, we see the little hand go up. Mama, I go to the bathroom. Okay, go ahead. All little boys and little girls, we all went at the same. Nobody figured it out for years. <laughs> we didn't go to the bathroom because we had to pee. No, we went there to mess around, and that's what we was doing. So just because you're coming to the congregation, this is my point, this is the point I'm getting to, don't mean that they're right. And sister, they don't mean that they're right. They're here looking. Remember the sister that came in? She's like, you might remember. As soon as she walked through the door, she said, where's the, the, uh, the marriage? Uh, what did she say? Where's the, where's the list of the brothers that's single? Why? Because she was online looking at all the handsome brothers. Oh, that one right there looked good. I want to get with him. That's what she's doing. Soon as she was, she didn't even sit down yet. She says, where's the application to fill it out? <laughs> she got tired of being passed around. Yeah, that happened to one time we was in Miami. Too. Hmm. She said, just came in. That's what about, where's the single man? That happened to in Miami. Exactly. Read on. Verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. You sisters, in case you didn't know it. Now, this is all plutonic, but I'm throwing it for the romance for the women. Sisters, it says some man is a friend for his own occasion. Some dudes get out of jail. You got sisters writing the brothers in jail. Now, I'm not saying brothers in jail don't need a wife. They do need a wife. But, sister, he can't do nothing for you. You writing him pen, what is it called, pen pal letters, pen pal. Pen pal. He coming out, you, he, can't, he can't do noth nothing for you. He's a friend for his own occasion. He telling his boys in jail, yo, she got her own crib. She got a car. She don't look half all that. But what she got, I need. That's a friend for his own occasion. And you write, writing the dude in jail, he coming out where you live. Give me your address, girl. I'm coming to see you. He, he needs a place to live, sis. He needs a place to live. See, and you're going to find out, when, you, when a man needs a place to live, he's going to tell you the right things. He's going to say all the right things so he can lay his head down. And while he's at it, he ain't had no, none of that in a long time, so he's just going to use you. I can't use those words. I'll just say he's just going to use you. I word it like it. Read it again. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. When you go through your hard time, sister, he gone. Oh, you're about to lose your house? You're about to lose the car? I'm out. He's going to find the next girl already. He already had it lined up. Read on. Verse 9. Now remember, this is going into platonic relationships. I don't want y'all to forget. It's going into friends, friends, but it's also the same principles for romance. Read on. Verse 9. And there is a friend who, being turned to enmity and strife, will discover thy reproach. You brothers ever have a relationship with a woman and she get mad with you? And she reveal all your laundry. And sisters too. The dude is Now, and you sisters that be having sex, I'll say, I won't point over there. Where's the line online? Where's the online camera? You sisters that's home right now, you having sex with that man, and you letting him videotape you, you stupid as hell. The second y'all have a falling out, guess what he going to do with the video? It's upload. Ooh. Now you're behind. It's all on the internet. And some of them dudes be showing it to their friends. Y'all know what I'm saying? Everybody quiet now. <laughs> some of you sisters go, oh, yeah, well, he does that instead of porn. No, sis. He's showing you behind to all his friends. Then when you, he get mad at you, he's going to upload that thing. You're going to be upset. Bishop, that's the thing of the world right now. You remember with all these stars, video come out, that's the thing of the world. They do that and showing them to their friends. Look, 
I sleep with her. That's, that's what you teach. Exactly. What verse you at? That was verse 9. Go ahead. Verse 10. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. You got some food. And sisters and all that. You ever see these women on Facebook? They show you their pretty face and a plate of food. Watch them hoes. <laughs> they trying to draw you in. And you know why? Because I'm, you know what we need to start doing? I'm going to just say this. I'm going to say it. Somebody might get mad. Brothers, all these sisters, and these sisters don't know how to cook. Sex only lasts but so long. The excitement lasts but so long. After a while, you get tired of McDonald's. One of the brothers in the back, I ain't going to point him out, <laughs> ran into the school mad, banging on the table. Said, what the hell is wrong with you? He said, I'm sick of my Chinese food. <laughs> I said, why don't you have your wife cook? She don't know how to cook. He was mad like his wig almost flew back. <laughs> you sisters better hook up with the sisters that know how to cook. The scriptures say, man, know thyself. Or I word like the scriptures say, examine yourself. You gotta, if you don't have sisters, you don't. Some of you sisters, some of them are in denial. And now denial is not a river in Africa. They don't know how to cook. But they don't want to admit it. They're going to cook you the nastiest thing to my here, Tyrone. Here, eat that. And it's nasty as hell. You better hook up with the sister that know how to cook. And more, mainly it's the older women that know how to cook. Uh, when I got married, I had my wife, she had, I said, you've got to go to Bishop Kanai's house and sit down with Sister Paya and learn how to cook West Indian food because that's what I want to eat right now. I'm tired of Judah food. It clogs my arteries. It's greasy. What the hell is this? All this dripping grease everywhere. You're like a jerry curl on your food. The oil just be flinging. I'm like, damn. Bishop, I'm glad you acknowledged that. <laughs> oh, I didn't mention Levi food yet. 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 Hey, hey, Ella, we got to big up Levi, man. I think Levi Chefs is the best chefs in. Levi in, Chefs. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, I talking about. Hey, hold on, hold on. I talking, I talk, I talking about for New York. You know, for New York. New York. Are you I see New York? The Levi sisters, they could throw it down the best. Benjamin. Simeon, you all step your game up, you know. Hey, when we were in, uh, hold on, Bishop, you got to tell uh, uh, Captain, uh, what's the brother in Miami? Captain in Miami, Zakar. Make sure you make sure Zakar, you heard that. Thank you, brother. I just want you to acknowledge that too. Well, we were in uh, Atlanta. You know, Captain Shemaya's mom is one of the best. I got to give a kudos. Yeah, yeah. The food. Oh, man. You have no idea. So all you sisters in Atlanta, you get with Captain Shemaya's mama. You pay her some money, too, and yeah. teach you how to cook. And you please your husband. You, that man ain't going nowhere because you know how to cook. I'm going to tell you that straight. Okay. So where we at, Officer Ezekiel? That was uh, we're at verse 11. And you know what? You sisters, it, should be a, it should be a requirement. Brother, before you get married, today, we're going to ask you, does she know how to cook. The second you say, yeah, I'm going to ask you, has she cooked anything for you? Yeah, she cooked me a Big Mac. She ain't cooking no damn Big Mac. <laughs> hey, hey, part of being born again is learning how to cook, man. <laughs> part of being born again is uh, repentance is learning how to cook, sisters, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I had to, a brother that came to me earlier. He was telling me that. That's a, and I said, you know how I cook? I said, make sure she cook for you, man. When the thing, and you have to know how she know how to cook or not. Don't go in there. Then she's saying that no. All I know how to do is boiling water. You know what I mean? Like she don't know how to do that. She, she hardly can cook her eggs. Exactly. Eggs. Anybody can cook her eggs, goddamn. Exactly. <laughs> and, and bro, I'm telling you, the sex gonna wear off. I mean, it's still gonna be all right, but after a while, you are gonna get hungry. After the sex, you get hungry. Sometimes you get the munchies. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't want no potato chips. The hell is this? What verse we in officers? Ezekiel? We have verse 10. <laughs> Go ahead. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. So the same principle that applies in a platonic relationship, a platonic friend relationship, meaning they only abide with you because you got food, things to provide for them, the same as in a romantic relationship. Go ahead. Verse 12. If thou 11. Be, verse 11. But in thy prosperity... He will be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. Go ahead. If thou be brought low. If you be brought low, sister. He will be against thee. He will be against thee. He ain't going to abide with you. Go ahead. And will hide himself from thy face. He's going to be with the next girl. That's what he's going to do. 
Go ahead. Separate thyself from thine enemies. Now it's letting you know. Separate from your enemies. Go ahead. And take heed of thy friends. You better prove that friend. Prove him. Go ahead. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Go ahead. And he that hath found such an one hath found a treasure. You want a friend that's going to stick. What's that expression? Ride and die. Is that the expression? Ride or die. Ride or die. Yeah. That's the same thing in a, room, in a marriage. That spout, like, uh, what's that movie uh, with Will Smith, the one I always talk about? Pursuit of happiness. That woman was not a ride or die woman. Second he fell on hard times, what, what did she do? She bounced. She was out. You don't want a woman like that. You want a woman that's going to ride with you through good times and bad, okay? Hey, Ella, you got a lot of sisters. As soon as, and as, soon as their husband go, or little problems arise in the marriage, they, they always complain and they leaving. You know, for, for the last month, I got at least 10, 10 calls. Sisters want to leave their husband because they're going through little problems. See? At least 10 relationships. You understand, in Israel, within the last couple of weeks. So that means those sisters were not properly prepared for marriage at all. No, they was not. Some of these sisters, you need to wait. And the sisters were brothers, too. We give the advice, what do we say, six months to a year? Some of them need to be two to three years. Wait, wait. Prove that person. They ain't going nowhere if they believe. Yeah, but Bishop, let's say that I just came in, right? I'm in my six months. The sister is in uh, eight months. That's not the sister I want to prove because me and her going through the same. I just left the world. She left the world. You understand me? But that's what that's what all that confusion comes from because sister just came in. She with a year. That dude, you say, how old? A year, a year. A year. That's the dude you want to talk to. That dude still sick like you sick. You want to talk to a dude that been there two years. At least you got some type of knowledge and understanding. But she don't go that way. She's seeking for her lust. That's when the lust is way out now. Reality be kicking. You know what the reality is? Punch in the mouth, beating them behind. These are reality that kicking. Exactly. I'm, look, I'm reading the Titus 2 questions. One of the sisters writes on the, the question. She said, I want a brother that's packing downstairs. Well, how the hell are we going to know if he's packing you home? <laughs> you think we're going to interview the brothers? Hey, brother, pull your pants down and go over there. What the hell is this? We ain't doing that. You home. As soon as I read it, I said, she ain't ready for marriage. She's still a, she a hoe. She go, well, I don't want to get stuck with nobody that's real short. Well, brother, life's a gamble. <laughs> life, sister, life's a gamble. You never know. You never know what you're going to get. You roll a dice, you roll. Snake eyes. Damn, I suck again. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey! Because you know they got that thing about look at the feet and the hands. Of the, oh, it's, that ain't true all the time. Oh. That ain't true. What's that, that? I don't want to call her a hoe. What's that sister that wrote a book about the Hollywood people? She yeah, talked about one of the, I ain't going to say his name. There's an athlete that she dated who's real. He's like six foot seven. She said in the book, you would have thought he would have been hung like a giraffe. She said, but he was short like a mouse. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. And it's a nasty book. I wouldn't advise y'all to write. I ain't going to give it the name of the book. But y'all know the whole. She's all on TV and all that. Anyway, what verse we at? Officer Ezekiel, what verse we at? <laughs> uh, verse verse uh, 14. Okay. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that hath found such an one hath found a treasure. Go ahead. Nothing doth countervail a faithful friend, and his excellency is invaluable. Exactly. Go ahead. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. See that? A faithful friend is the medicine of life. They stick with you through thick and thin. That goes plutonic and romantic. No matter what you're going through, she's there with you. No matter what you're going through, sisters, your husband going to be there. That's a faithful friend. It's the medicine of life. Go ahead. And they that fear the Lord shall find him. Go ahead. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. If you fear the Lord, you're going to make sure that your friend is like you. You believe, your friend gonna believe too. You ain't gonna be that sister that hang out with nine hoes and say, well, I'm not a hoe, I just hang out with them. Well, chances are you're gonna be the 10th, okay? That's how, that's how life works. Show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Whoever your circle of friends are is who you are. You brothers, you hang around a group of crackheads, you're gonna eventually become a crackhead. Read that again. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship. I got a story for you, my younger brother got married. My mama told my younger brother, hey, move out of that neighborhood in the Bronx. It's no good. It ain't right. 
He said, no, nah, I got this. My wife is good. She's on point. He took, he took a job with Xerox. They said he had to go for training three months in Maryland. So he left his wife there, okay, and his new, his new baby girl. So after a while, my wife, my mother is calling her to see how she's doing, and she, the phone wouldn't be answered. Wouldn't nobody answer the phone. So my mom drove down to go see what's going on. And people in the neighborhood said, oh, I just saw her. She was selling a VCR up the block. And they said, my mother said, what do you mean she's selling a VCR? They said, you didn't know she's on crack now? Crack! My mother hit the roof and called my brother and said, you better get down. I told you, boy. You got her in this area, this vicinity around crackheads. All her girlfriends was on crack. And it starts off smoking weed. After a while, smoking weed don't give you that high you want. You got to go to the next new high. Okay? So he didn't listen. The whole family fell apart. Whole family. Read that again. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. So as I said, I want you to understand. Although it's written for a plutonic friendship, the guidelines are the same for a romantic marriage relationship. It's the same principles. So you want to uh, meditate on what we just went over. So that way when you meet uh, somebody you have an interest in, you'll be able to do that. Right. We just read, so, I, so as he is, so is his neighbor also, right? That's also go to the scripture that says, both shall be one flesh. You understand when you meet some, when, when you brothers, you meet a sister, a sister meet a brother, you all both become one flesh. That's the same thing that it's saying there. Exactly. So now, so now all the kids, I want to clear the kids out the room. I want to clear all. I'm giving y'all fair warning. Do not write me an email and say, how dare you put that up there? I'm warning you. Get the kids out the room. Huh, I want to show you a video. There's some, it may help some of you sisters. It may not. Uh, I want the first video I want is called what's the name of the video? Chilling. It's called Chilling 911. Don't put it up yet, Enoch. No, don't put it up yet. I want to say a few things. Uh, I want to talk about a certain type of love. It's called, write this down, mania love. Mania. Many of love sisters and brothers, in case you didn't know, is an obsessive love. It's a paranoid love. It's a tainted love. It's a crazy, crazier than a lark love. It leads the spouse into a type of madness. Listen good to what I'm saying. I want you to roll with me. Just roll with me. It leads the spouse into a type of madness brought on by psychological imbalance. In other words, a crazy nooker. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It was there when you met the, the dude or the woman, but you either, A, you didn't prove the person thoroughly, or two, you ignored all the signs. I'm going to say it again. The signs that this person was crazy has always been there, but you did one of two things. You either, A, did not prove the person thoroughly. Let's get married in three months. Three months. You know you can hold yourself together in three months, sis. A crazy person can keep themselves together in three months. But in that fourth month, he's going to explode. So you either didn't prove the person thoroughly, or two, you, did, you ignored all the warning signs. You saw that when, that when you talked to him, he had that, that twitch in the face. <laughs> Those are crazy signs. Something ain't right in the head. His hands start to tremble when he talks to you, like he want to bust you in the face, but he's holding himself. These are little signs, little signs. Watch it, watch it. I want to show you all a video that occurred to a young lady back, I believe it was 2012. Her name was Diana Cook. Some of you may know about her. Uh, her case changed the entire 911 system. And the way I came upon it, a few days ago, I'm asleep, and I hear screaming. I thought it was the wife. I jump up. I'm running to get the gun. I'm ready to blast capping somebody. Then I realized it was TV. I left the TV on. So I watched the whole episode, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I saw it was on, uh, what's a crime watch? One of those shows, True Story, one of those things. Mm -hmm. A woman named Diana Cook, a sister, she married a young man named Delvecchio Patrick. There were signs that the brother was crazy in the beginning. He, would, he used to curse her and smack her. But you know, brothers, how some of these women are. 
They so hard up and desperate. In her mind, she says, I can change him. And he loves me. I can change. Give me a Sirach 11 real quick. She didn't want to give him up because he was cute. His hair was fried and laid to the side. She liked that thing. He was fashionable. So, what, read that for us, Ezekiel. Sirach 11, uh, which verse? 11 verse 2. The book of Sirach, chapter 11 and verse 2. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. Women always look at the outside. So the Lord says to the women, don't commend a man just because he look good. There might be a demon up inside his head. He might be crazier than a lark. And don't despise him either because he might not look like your ideal. Whoever in the woman's mind is that male, handsome, hunk, whatever. Don't despise him, the Lord says. Because women are very, what's the word? Vain. Superficial, vain. Superficial and vain. What does he look like? I want my girlfriends to be jealous when I walk down the street with Del Vecchio. That was her mindset. They got married. And after four years, they got divorced. But we, let me tell you, sister, something. When you marry a crazy, obsessed brother, although you're divorced, the marriage ain't over. He's still there. Watch this. Uh, so let's open up. Let's begin. The name of the video is Chilling 911 Call from Slain Woman. Chilling. That's it right there. Lower it up big. It's only three minutes. Let's listen good. Hello and good evening. The murder trial of a man named Del Vecchio Patrick opened today in Dallas with some gut-wrenching te gut wrenching testimony and jurors listening to some haunting 911 calls. Yeah, and this case actually changes the way that Dallas handles 911 domestic violence calls. For the first time today, we heard Deanna Cook begging for her life while being attacked and she was actually on the phone with dispatchers at the time. Fox 4 Sean Rabb has more on this gripping testimony first here at 6. Sean. Hey, defense attorneys declared Delvecchio uh, Patrick did not kill his ex-wife, Deanna Cook. Prosecutors told jurors much about this case would make them angry. But now, they said, now was the time to focus on Delvecchio Patrick and what he's accused of. We simply cannot broadcast for you most of Deanna Cook's 911 call. Simply too graphic, too disturbing. The small, the small part, though, that we will play, we warn you now, is not for the sensitive. How would you describe their relationship? How were they together? Rocky. Vicki Cook, Deanna Cook's mother, told the court how her daughter and Del Vecchio Patrick would not just argue, but fight, and how both had injured the other in their four-year volatile relationship. Del Vecchio Patrick sat in court with a full head of hair, braided, a different look than when he was arrested, back then bald. Vicki Cook testified to what she and her other daughters found when they went to Deanna's home. When Carlita kicked the door in, the smell hit her and she just turned and ran. And I went in, and the water, like, it was so high, it was covering my feet. Vicki Cook made her way through the house to the bedroom and then opened the door to Deanna's bathroom. I saw, like, a shadow, a shadow behind the curtain, and I started screaming because it was, it was her, and the water was still running. The water was still running. And I just said, he killed her. He said he was going to do it. And he did it. He did it. He did it. <laughs> People in the gallery were crying as Vicki Cook gave her anguished testimony. Judge Brandon Birmingham called for a recess. Delvecchio Patrick sat, showing no reaction to what she described. Jurors stared in his direction. Some wiped their eyes. As court resumed, Deanna Cook's August 17th 911 call played in court, much of it too horrific to broadcast. What you do here now is uncomfortable to listen to as Deanna Cook begged for her life. Asked by prosecutor Trey Stock if she could identify the male voice on the call, Vicki Cook extended her arm and glared at the defendant. 
Now, we also heard testimony today from a police officer first assigned the call. Detective Julia Menchaca explained she did not receive enough emergent information from dispatchers to justify kicking in the door to Deanna Cook's home and that she saw nothing out of place when she arrived there that Friday, August 17, 2012. Delvecchio Patrick could get life in prison if convicted. Testimony continues Tuesday. So hard for that so family. So what I want you to Sean see, they had a, for what's the word story. Used, okay. a volatile relationship. Crazy obsessive. He would not let her. They had already been divorced. This dude, when you, when you watch the whole thing, he would follow her to work. He'd be outside her house. He stalked her because he thought she was messing with somebody else. And remember, I'm saying they were already divorced. That crazy obsessive person, the marriage ain't over. In their, his mind, y'all still married. Okay, and there's nothing you could do. Now, I want to show the next part to this. It's called 911 murder trial day one. 911 murder trial. So the volatile relationships, beware of, okay? When you start a relationship, you're already fussing and fighting, and this is just an according stage. Cursing each other out? No, no, that, that's not for you. That's not for you. Okay, now, look, what it, read that for me, Ezekiel. Murder trial of Del Vecchio, Patrick, who killed his ex-wife, Deanna Cook. Family members found Cook in 2012, two days after she choked, screamed for her life while on the phone with the 911 dispatcher. Her death helped spark an overhaul of how police handle emergency calls and inspired an anti-domestic violence movement in Dallas. So now, with this, like, like they said, it changed a lot of the 911 callings. The dispatcher was a very nonchalant. You ever hear the, the expression about the boy who cried wolf? She had called so many times, people got immune to it. And, oh, it's the same woman calling about her husband outside the house again. But this time, it was serious, and nobody took it serious. Also, they didn't have a tracking system back then. Um, and they didn't let the police listen or give them the or urgency of the 911 call. So when the cop went to the house, she just looked into the window and didn't see anything. But everything was happening upstairs. She looked in, she went to the windows, didn't see anything, and said, nobody's here. And they left. This is the same court case. Turn it up a little bit. This is the 911 call. So she had dialed 911 and dropped the phone. So she wasn't able to talk to the 911 dispatch. And in the back, he's choking her, beating her. Okay, close it up. It gets worse. It gets worse. I don't want you to hear all the rest. But 
that's to let us know is the importance of proving a friend. It's very important because you don't know, you don't want that crazy, obsessed person. You might get a Devecchio Patrick, you sisters. You end up with a crazy dude like that. Oh boy. And listen, those are what do they call them when you go to the police? You get a uh, order of protection. Listen, listen, listen. She a restraining order, order of protection. Listen, the cops are not there twenty four seven. Most of the women get jacked up by the time the cops get there. Okay, so give me uh, Sirach chapter three, verse twenty four about that crazy obsessed person. Sirach three verse twenty four, the book of Sirach chapter three and verse twenty four. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Go ahead. And an evil suspicion. And an evil suspicion. Hath overthrown their judgment. That's really keen when you got that manic, uh, obsessive lover. Okay. He always got an evil suspicion about you. Thinking you talking to somebody. Think you doing something. I hope you sisters are listening good. I really, really do. Give me uh, Proverbs 22, 24. You want to make sure you don't get a dude like that. Okay. And then, you know what dudes like that do? They move you far away from brothers and sisters and your family. You gone. You ain't got nobody now. So he got you. There's a movie. What's the name of this movie? There's a, oh, there's a few movies like that. Uh, what's the one with the white girl that faked her death? Sleeping with the enemies one. Then there's a gone girl, right? Gone girl. That's the one Renan just sent me. And there's a black one, too, Damn. with uh, Lynn Whitfield. Oh, no. Uh, what's the brown-skinned brother women like? Uh, who? Idris Elba. Not Idris Elba. Blair Underwood. That's it. That's it right? Blair Underwood. What's the name of that movie? Diary of a what? Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Yeah. That's it. Diary. That dude was crazy obsessive. That's my point. My point of saying all that. If you don't know an example, look at that movie. I showed you an actual court case in case that ain't good enough. For some of your sisters just hard up and desperate. You, you think you could change that crazy obsessed brother. Read that for us. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, 22 verse 24. Yeah. Make no friendship with an angry man. Make no friendship with an angry man. So that's for a plutonic friendship as well as a romantic relationship. You see the dude got an anger problem. Leave that person alone. No matter what happened, he want to fight. You go out, he want to fight somebody. If it ain't you, he want to fight somebody else. These are, these are signs. Leave him alone. Did you finish the verse? No, there's more. Okay. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. Now this is the Lord speaking here. Okay, give me 14 and 17 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and the man of wicked devices is hated. You got to watch out for the brothers that's soon angry. Soon angry. I know brothers online talk about why, why you getting on the, why don't you get on the man, on the woman? No, I'm getting on you brothers right now. Today is your day. Just for a moment. I'm about to throw the shoe on that side of the room in a minute. Give me 29 Proverbs, 29 and 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 22. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Sisters, you ever notice some brothers, they will start an argument for no reason. It'll come out of left field. Like, what are we arguing about? He just walked through the door. He mad. About something you did, and, and it was, may have been a week or a month ago. He brings it up. Watch these crazy people. So, courting. Proving is very, very important. Take your time. Take your time. Give me Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6, verse 12 and 13. Oh, Ella, the reason why that's important too, because after they, after they run and they hook up with that brother and they find out that that brother crazy, because a couple of sisters, they, been, they, they hook up with crazy brothers and like they want us to authorize them to lead the crazy brother. I said, sis, I can't do that. <laughs> you got to stay with that brother. That's who you choose. <laughs> hey, 
dead. You, you stuck, yo. sis. You stuck. You stuck. You know. So don't call. Don't call us and think we gonna tell you. Oh, leave the brother. And what they, what the sisters and them say, they say, well, I didn't really know the scriptures that well, and I didn't watch all the classes, and I didn't know I was born to that man till we die. <laughs> I said, well, you know now, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but he can. It's not that they don't know. Now that now that happened, now they don't. Know. You understand? They right. Know. Yeah. When he was slamming yeah. hams with her, it was all good. It was lovely. Skyrockets. Her toes was curled. Her eyes go by, back behind her head. It was lovely. <laughs> but when the crazy side came out, now I, I didn't know the scriptures. Then I didn't know. I didn't know the scriptures. Yeah, right. Where we at, <laughs> Officer Ezekiel? The Book of Proverbs, chapter six and verse twelve. A naughty person. A wicked man walketh with a froward mouth. You know what a froward mouth is? Somebody that loves to insult, call names. That's a froward mouth. And some sisters like that thing. I don't know about some of you women. You, you see a dude, he likes to play. What's that game called? The dozens. Y'all remember that? The dozens? He got a quick mouth. He's witty and in insults. He can insult the hell out of you. Okay? That's what he does. And that turns the women on. That's a froward mouth. He says whatever comes to his mind. Okay? Look at the BHI community on YouTube. Many of them have a froward mouth. Whatever they say, they don't care about the laws of God. If it sounds good, just say it. Read on. Verse 12. I mean, verse 13. He winketh with his eyes. That's how he got to sisters. Go ahead. He speaketh with his feet. Meaning he's kicking you behind. Go ahead. He teacheth with his fingers. Yeah, he's teaching you a lesson. Pow! Right upside your head. I'm going to teach you something. That's what he's doing. The Bible says that's a wicked man, a naughty person. And some of you sisters, unfortunately, get hooked up with people like that. Okay? The only advice we can give you, you get a dude like that and you're going to separate, don't stay. I'm going to give you a fair warning. If you stay in the same city, if you stay in the same city with a dude like that, he's going to find you. My advice, all I can because y'all grown, you women grown. Leave someplace else where nobody knows your name. Remember that movie that show Cheers? Where, where, well, anyway, everybody knows your name. Anyway, I don't know how to go. You want to leave town. Brothers, I got to go. You all right, sister? Brothers, I just got to go. Where you got? Don't worry. I don't want nobody to know where I'm going. Because this fool is crazy. You better tell a post office, too. Do not fraud my mail. To wherever I'm going, you don't tell nobody. Where I'm going. You better make, you better cover your track or the dude is crazy. He will hunt you down. The crazy nooker. And he might have on a meat tree. And have fringes and a border of blue. I'm telling you sisters, you got to watch these crazy is Hebrews out there. Some of them is ain't right. Give me Sirach 28. This, that happened to one of the sisters. Remember he meet one who wear the meat tree. Oh, yes, that's right. You, here's another, you sisters that call or e call us, email, or come up to the table and say, is it okay, because it did happen, like Deacon Lobbers, if I talk to another brother that's not in IUIC, all we can, because you women is grown, you all grown, all we can do is suggest and give our advice, our fatherly advice. Our suggestion is that you not do that, because you don't know what you're going to get involved with. I says, we said to the sister, you remember we were talking about, it was back at Paulding, I believe it was, Paulding Avenue. Sister, what is he involved in? Well, his, his elder teaches multiple wives, but he don't believe it. <laughs> mm. His elder teaches multiple wives, but he doesn't believe it. So we said, sister, chances are, if he's around that environment listening to those classes, he's going to believe it. No, no, not him, not him, no. She sh so she moves. She goes down to the ATL, gets hooked up. Then a month later, maybe two months, we get the phone call. <laughs> I'm wife number two now. <laughs> well, the sister, there's nothing we can, you stuck. That's your man. Have fun now. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's all we could do. Oh, Ella, you, you remember she wanted to come back to our congregation. Right. And we like, no, you, ain't, you stay where you at. Stay with your husband. You know? Stay with your husband, man. And it was no marriage paper. That's your man, though. No, he, he, he plowing your back out. He plowing you. Come on, stop. You stuck now. You knew the, he was with us for years since learning the scriptures. You didn't believe. Okay. The next thing was another sister that hooked up with a dude. She came back. This was years, years, years ago with a black eye. 
And we, we warned her too, but she didn't listen. She didn't listen either. Where are we at, Officer Ezekiel? You said Sirach. You didn't say what? Uh, book. Uh, 28, verse 11. The book we of, had, that, remember what we're talking about, that crazy obsessive love. Okay, that needs you 365, 24 hours a day, where you at, where you going, who you talking to. I, and always need, to, I love you. Do you love me? I love you. Come on with that stuff there. Read that. <laughs> <laughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 28, verse 11. And hasty contention kindleth the fire. And in hasty fighting, sheddeth blood. That's what we saw in the video, on the case. And that's what happens in some marriages, some relationships. Give me James 4 and 2. James chapter 4, verse 2. The book of James chapter 4 and verse 2. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and, ha and desire to have. Ye, when it says kill, it's going into hate. And the reason it uses the word kill is because before you kill and or murder somebody, the first emotional thought is what hate that's why it's using the word kill like it says give me that precept in matthew 5 about being angry with his brother you know what i want matthew whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause that one it's going into the same concept you know what i want yes Moses, i got you uh the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 22 but i say unto you that the verse who, above it verse 21 you have heard that it was said by them of old time that thou shall not kill. See that? Thou shall not kill. This goes to what James 4, 2 says. Go ahead. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. That's called hatred. Angry with your brother without a cause is hatred. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka shall be in danger of the council. That's insults out of hatred like you see on YouTube. Right? But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Because the brother was never reconciled. He, he never made up with his brother. He kept it, the hatred going. So go back to James 4 and 2 so we understand now. James chapter 4 verse 2. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not. Because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not. Because ye ask amiss. That ye may consume it upon your lust. So when we pray and ask. When it says ask, it's going into prayer. We pray for things, but we ask amiss. Meaning we're praying for the wrong reason. Many of us, when we pray for a spouse. Women include, you pray for a spouse. You're not praying because you want to grow old with somebody. You're praying to satisfy your sexual appetite. A lot of you. Okay? Inside, you never really changed. You just want to fulfill that lust, okay? Give me Sirach 25. But before we go there, before we go there, and I pray that the case that we just showed will help some of you sisters and or brothers. Take notice of that. Back in the 90s, early 2000s, there was a young lady named, those of you that's my age, y'all might know the sister named Deatra Hicks. She was the bomb. She was the new uh, first like a Beyonce type back in the day, dark skin lady. But she could sing lovely, lovely, lovely voice. Okay, she's been on divorce court twice. She had two different marriages. Okay, let me tell you about the next kind of love, and it's called revenge love. So we went from mania love, that, that, that obsessive nature, paranoid love. Now we're going to talk about revenge love. Revenge love is tainted love. It's vindictive. Each argument turns into an opportunity, I'm going to pay you back. What you did to me, I'm going to pay you back. What you said to me, I'm going to get you back. That's that vindictive love. That's that, that revenge type of a love, okay? Give me the first video. It's called uh, Funniest. Revenge love produces blame and rejection. When y'all when get married, brothers and sisters, when you have trouble in the flesh, you're supposed to learn from the trouble, heal from the problem, and move on. But that revenge love is a love, I'm going to hold on to it, and I'm going to get you back. Be mindful of that type of love. So now, I want to show this video, and I want you to notice the things that the man says, and notice the woman. And this is the singer, Deatra Hicks. Play the video. We now join Lauren Harper and Deatra Hicks as Judge Lynn hears their case. 
Mr. Harper, you've come here asking for $1,760, which you say uh, is enough money to pay for 16 therapy uh, sessions that you have had to undergo or need to undergo as a result of the, of the mental trauma and abuse that you suffered at the hands of Mrs. Hicks. We is that I, I was an alcoholic, and, and uh -huh. I drank a lot for okay. years, and, and my, my lying and, and stealing and everything that I was doing, it was as a direct result. Now, Mrs. Hicks, you have a lovely voice, but, but minute, I don't want to hear listen, it now. I, let I, I, let it go. Your Honor, let first of all, she, she likes to fight. Because she, the problem is, she's not used to nobody being able to talk to her, rebuttal her, and say something to her. Joe, you see that foot? <laughs> Working. It's, it's you gonna dig a hole underneath my witness stand. That's what I'm talking about. Your Honor, you told me do, not do, to. Do, 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 do you have a problem with your anger? Yes, and, and I'm going to anger management class. That's right. And, and, I'm seeing, and I'm seeing a psychologist as well. And I have exercises. That's what the humming is coming from. Oh, that's what yes. the humming is for. It's an exercise so that to is keep to me calm. calm. You yes, to when keep you me are calm. Exci mm -hmm. excited in a state of mm -hmm. agitation. Your Honor. Your Honor. Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how much singing did you do during the course of your marriage? Well, I, I, I sing all the time. I, I'm a singer. But I just started this singing while he's talking to keep me calm. keep you cool. Because he lied. Every time he lied, I just had to punch him in the face. This woman got a problem. I think, she, you know, I'm scared for her life. I still love her. We, we spent a lot of years he together. Lied. He's lying. Listen, Ooh, your no, no, we were all, I'm Go saying ahead. to you that because as a result of her Ooh. anger, her anger, she don't know where to stop. Ooh. I don't care what the situation is. She ready to fight. We driving on the freeway. She had to be at work at 9, 9.30. Right. I'm doing the speed limit. It's 65. She want me to go faster on the freeway. And I'm not going faster on the freeway for her. So I don't go faster. Right. She slapped me. Oh. But if, it, if, the, if the situation was turned, everybody would be ready to string That's him right. up. That he hit you. If he hit and me, I would have no been gone. right for you to hit him. I'm not saying it's right, Your Honor. Other than the... And I got the idea. <laughs> I got the idea from cheaters to hire a private investigator to find out what he was doing. Oh, my. Yes. And um, he was going to Buffalo to see someone else. And he was up and living a whole nother life. He was seeing this woman, and this woman is wearing a big old ring on her finger. No, he went and he took his trip, and I went and I took the same trip right behind him. And you caught him? And I caught him. Knocked on the door. Uh-huh. The girl comes to the door. Yeah. And I'm like, is my husband in here? And he comes out like, you know, who, who's, who's that baby? So I'm looking at him. I lost it again. And we started, and we started fighting. And, and well, I don't know if she was fighting me or if she was helping me fight him. Because all I could see was my ring on her finger. What? You are so... As far as she oh cheated. Because I wasn't living with her. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't let me stay here. So I was going to Buffalo. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you're not having any kind of relationship with the mother. The relationship is solely with the child. That it was my ring. You know, and, and she what needed she to be say? she needed to be a woman and give me my. What my did she say? She said that's her ring, and he gave it to her, and I'm like, well, this is this is not true. That's my ring, you know. I, not your only, Honor, hang on, <laughs> hang on. Not only is the woman here, but the woman and the ring are here. So we're going to bring in the woman and the ring. Now, yes, and you hum or whatever you need to do, your but don't look over there. Woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Is that the ring we're talking about? Yes, this is oh. my ring, Your Honor. That's a big ring. Very Your big. Honor. Who gave it to you? Lauren. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Lauren gave me the ring? Right. So it's, it's my ring. He gave me the ring. Where he got it from is not my business. Oh. Well, what if it didn't belong to him? Mm. Yeah, I know. When your husband proposed to you, did you ask him, was that, where did he get it from? Oh, that's not the issue at all. The issue is, <laughs> if he had stolen it from somebody, then Do it I would know? never be my ring because he can't give over title to something he never owned. How would I know that he never owned? How would I know that? Because I if told you, and this is the ring to you, that he... Why that. are you talking while I'm talking? Oh, my Lord. Now, wait, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, hang on, hang on. Do you know that he had given 
giving it to her at one no, juncture. Yeah. No, I did not. So know. now, how could you not know that? <clears throat> how could I not know? That? Yeah, I know that. I just met it. <sighs> he mean, didn't how? tell you. He didn't tell me that he took a ring from a woman and gave it to me. No, not a woman. His wife. I didn't even know the man was married. And <sighs> I am a victim. I'm a victim. He lied to me just like he lied to her. But I have forgiven him. You're I'm victim. moving on. Did she say I'm a victim? I'm a victim. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Harper, you actually have the nerve to bring your wife here to ask for therapy. So why don't you tell me about the therapy you say you need, why you need it, and why you think she should pay for it? A liar. At worst, you a liar and a thief who went in and stole a ring from one woman and gave it to another woman. If you've got any woman who it with you, I wouldn't wear it on my finger. I would give it back to her. I'd have too much dignity for myself and my morals and my state of mind to wear something that was stolen from the woman whose husband you were sleeping with. Ooh, how deep is that? She can have it. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mrs. Brown, there will be no recovery in this matter. Thank it you, is so Honor. wonderful. I'm excited. That's right. I got my ring back. And you can have them. Congratulations. So, Rob, okay. you feel good about oh, that? Oh, I feel great. I feel wonderful. The Thank ring you very that I much. Gave. Thank you very much. Take your ring. Congratulations. Take your ring and go sing about that. Oh, go sing about that. I got my ring. Well, go on and sing about it. Sing a little house. I got my ring. All right, good, good, yeah. good. So. As y'all still, so many, so, there's so much you could cover on that little clip alone between his drunkenness, his lying, his stealing, and then he blames all his problems on the woman. Give me that, Sirach 25, 23. <laughs> the driving down the highway and gets smacked upside the head because you're driving a speed. Can you imagine that? <laughs> now, sisters, there was a code. There was a, there's a man code from back in the day. Never hit a woman. I don't think this new generation follows that code. Nah. Sisters, some brothers will knock this taste out your mouth. I'm just going to tell you. So read that. <laughs> read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 23. A wicked woman abateth the courage and maketh an heavy countenance. A wicked woman abateth the courage and maketh a heavy countenance. And I wanted to start there with this particular video that we just saw. Uh, before I deal with, with the man, we touch, touch on his drunkenness, his lying, his stealing. But when you have a, when you're a woman has a wicked demeanor about her, she can abate your courage, meaning she's angry about everything. And it makes him sometimes say, you know what? I'm going to get me another woman. He sneaks out behind her back. Now, that's in some cases, not all cases. Sometimes it's just no damn good. Read that again. A wicked woman abateth the courage, maketh an heavy countenance, and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress. No, I don't want that part. Give me Isaiah 58 and 9. This is what he said. The man. The man. He said his drunkenness, his lying, and his stealing was a direct result of her problems, her anger, so forth and so on. This is what the Lord says. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 9. <laughs> Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger. You see that part? Put away the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger. You know what that means when you're blaming somebody else for your psychological hangups? You're blaming somebody else for your own sin. Like the Adam and Eve syndrome. Remember that? What have you done, Adam? The woman that you gave me. Made me do such and such. Eve, what did you do? The serpent made me do such. Everybody's blaming somebody else except themselves. Read it again. Then shalt, thou, then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Meaning speaking lies. The Lord hates putting forth of the finger, meaning accusing others of your own shortcomings and speaking lies. He hates that thing. Notice in many of these marriages, we are always blaming the other person for what the marriage problem is. It's never 
Let me do self-examination. Like I said, give me that second Corinthians, I think, 13 and 5. We don't know. Nobody, male or female, wants to apply this. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves. Read it again. Examine yourselves. Read it again. Examine yourselves. The Bible says examine yourselves. Not put forth the finger and accuse others. Examine yourself. Nobody wants to do that. How about you take a piece of paper, write down all your inaccuracies, all your problems that you got, and let her do the same thing. But you know what you'll get? You'll write like 27 things. She'll write one. I've seen that. I have seen that. I told her husband, just write down, because they both are accusing me, just to write down what's wrong with you. You write down, sis, what's wrong with you. Come back after later on. Come back. He wrote like 20-something things. She wrote down one. That's somebody. See, somebody like that? Mm -mm. That's, I can do no wrong. Everything wrong is your fault. That's why you got to prove a friend. You must prove that person first. If they can't self-examine themselves, there's a problem. Read it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? When y'all are in this truth, you come in this truth as a new creature, you should be able to self-examine. You should know all your social hang-ups, all your psychological dysfunctions. You should know you. I know me. It's like, what's that old expression? That uh, well, you don't know. You don't know either. Back in the South. <laughs> back down South, there was an expression, you smell you before anybody else smells you. Some of y'all don't know what that, even what that means. You know you funky first. You got to examine yourself. What the hell is wrong with me? Okay, give me our 1 Corinthians 7, 28. So now the brother blames his drunkenness, his lying, his stealing on the woman. She admits what I did appreciate about her. She at least admitted she had anger issues and she was going to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> 1 Corinthians 7, 28, please. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 28. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. If you marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Go ahead. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. Such shall have trouble in the flesh. Go ahead. But I spare you. Meaning Paul was warning them. When you get married, for all you single brothers and sisters, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. Because you got two different people, two spirits coming together as one. Your problems in your relationship is meant to grow the relationship. Not undo the relationship, but to grow the relationship. You're trying to know that spirit. That spirit is trying to get to know you. Hey, in that same chapter, Ezekiel, find me the one that says better to marry than to burn. Something like that it says. Verse, uh, verse 8. Verse 9. First Corinthians 7, verse 9. Listen good. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Here's the question for that verse, because this is what some of y'all do. You say, I'm burning. I got to get married. A brother up in here just left us this morning. He said he only married because he was burning. So this morning he kissed his wife on the forehead and said, I can't do this no more. Bye. So you brothers that never get your hair cut. So, that verse. Read that verse again. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 9. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. Remember we read earlier about prove a friend. Remember we read earlier about try the spirits. Why do you think that those two scriptures are voided based on 1 Corinthians 7 and 9? Read it again. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. Do you still got to prove the person? You better believe you do. If you rush it into a relationship, that means you better prove them still. Wait. So Paul ain't saying rush and don't prove them because you might get yourself a STD. A spiritually, what is it, a spiritually transmitted demon. 
<laughs> I ain't talking about a sexual thing yet. I'm talking about a spiritually transmitted demon. That's an STD too. You better prove that person. Better to marry than to burn. Yeah, that's true. But don't forget, you still best to prove that person. Give me 1 Peter 3 and 7. They too had a volatile relationship. She would hum and sing. It, like that movie, that, remember that show Bad Boys? When I think it was Martin Lawrence's character had to go to anger management and go, ooh, sah. Ooh, they give you certain things that you, to just purge the anger from you, distract the anger, because you want to smack somebody upside the head. So read that for us, 1 Peter 3 and 7. We're going to read down. Watch book this. Of, the book of this first, goes back to the relationship we just saw. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. You brothers, you get married, dwell with that woman according to knowledge. Give me the precept, Malachi 2, 7, please. We're coming back to Peter. Dwell with them according to knowledge. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So the knowledge God is making reference to is the law of God. So when we go back to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, once again. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. You husbands, dwell with them according. It's, and it goes to you because guess what? As the husband, you're what, brothers? You're ahead of the house. That's why it's directed to you. That's why you can't. But, but it's the woman. The woman. No. You married, her. you married her, okay? So you, by God, is the head of the house. So it says, likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, meaning the laws of God. Read. Giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, meaning the Lord is dealing with you first and foremost. Not to say God don't deal with the woman, but you as the head, he's dealing with you. It's your job to get down into this book and apply and set everything in order. It's your job, not her job. It's your job. When Jacob's wife, uh, Rachel, stole idols, what did Jacob say? Nobody knows. Wow. Somebody fi find it for me in Genesis. Let me lob a talk. Okay. Read that. Th 36 and what? 35 and 2. Thank you. 35 and 2. Start at 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 35 and verse 1. This is after Rachel stole her father's idols. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make them an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. So Jacob did what? He commanded his house. Before Jacob went to deal with the Lord, he had to get his house in order. So likewise, the same with you, brothers. So when we go back to 1 Peter chapter 3, that's why it's directed to the husband. Read that again. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life. What you got to realize, although God is dealing with the man, he's also dealing with the woman. That's why it says as being heirs together. Together. Right? To the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Your marriage is falling apart because God's not answering your prayers. He's not answering your prayers because you're not dealing with her according to knowledge. Okay, she's a demon. Put her in order. Set your house in order. That's what Jacob did with Rachel. And Leah, he set that whole thing in order. So likewise, you mean like Deacon Malachi said, you can't fix that problem in your house? You're on the street correcting everybody's problem, but you can't correct your home. That's called a hypocrite. Read on. Verse 8. Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one for another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. So the same thing that deals with the platonic friendship, like we discussed at the beginning, Goes with the marriage. It says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Some sisters have said, you love the brothers more than me. Find me that scripture where it says about there's not, friends never meet a miss, but above them both is a man with his wife. It's in Sirach. Find me that. It says, find me that. Okay, find me that before we move on. 
Yeah, hey, I love you brothers, but I ain't love you all more than my wife, man. I tell you all this shit right now. <laughs> I found it. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going? Where are we going? The book of Sirach, chapter 40, verse 23. Sirach, chapter 40, verse 22? 23. 23, thank you. A friend and companion never meet amiss. Meaning a true friend, a true companion, you never fall on hard or bad times between one another. There's never bad blood between the two of you. Go ahead. But above both, but above both is a wife with a husband. Is a wife with a husband. So why? Because that's the beginning of family. That's the beginning of nation, right there. A husband and wife that multiplies. Two friends can't multiply. I'm sorry, brothers, you can't do it. <laughs> it don't happen like that. So when we go back to First Peter's chapter three and verse nine again, watch this. First Peter three verse nine, not rendering evil for evil. Or railing for railing. Stop. In a relationship, that's called revenge love. In a relationship, that's called revenge love. I said something evil to you, she going to say something evil back to me. I did something bad, she going to do something bad. Well, where is the head of the house at? Who's going to lay down the law of God and say, let's stop this? Oh, man, wherefore art thou? Hey, Ella, the man, the man, he turned into a woman going yes. back and forth with, there the, you go. with her. You know, and I keep telling brothers, listen, you don't go back and forth arguing with your wife. Only females do that. You know, so that's where the evil for evil, railing for railing begins. The revenge, the revenge stuff. She says something to hurt you, you say back something to hurt her. You know, and it just keep getting worse and worse and worse. Now you all hate each other. <laughs> exactly. You know? And that's what we saw in the, 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 the divorce court that we just saw, that revenge love. Read that again, verse 9. First Peter 3 and 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise contrary blessing. Contrarywise means do the opposite. Go ahead. But contrarywise blessing. Blessing. Go ahead. Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. So we got to start to do the opposite. She says something evil, brothers. Give her a blessing. Say something kind to us. You know what? Give me that in Proverbs 15, 1. And you women got to learn this too. Proverbs 15, 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, and verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath. So when he or she says something evil to you, give a soft answer. Give a blessing in a soft tone. It's going to calm down the demons. See, the Lord has given us keys and principles how to solve and fix not just our friends, our friendship, but our relationships if we just apply the keys. Go back to 1 Peter 3, please. 1 Peter 3 and verse 10. Right, 9 again, 9. Verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they should speak no guile. You hear that, brother? So you want to have a good relationship, just like you want to have a good relationship with your wife and the brothers around you? It says, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. We got to learn to discipline our mouth. Sometimes we do get mad and we, 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 we say things we know we should not have said. You say things that you later regret. I should not have said that. And especially with brothers, we can pretty much handle it. But the woman, nine times out of ten, she hold that thing. It hurt her so bad, she holds that. She's calling her mama. She's calling her girlfriends. She don't know how to deal with you. Okay? That's why we got to put a muzzle on our mouth like it says in James, the third chapter. Okay? Read on. Verse 11. Let him eschew evil. Meaning avoid evil. And do good. Do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Give me Sirach 26, 26. This is what Deacon Mal Malachi had read earlier. Malachi had uh, paraphrased earlier. He quoted it. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 26. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. So you sisters, if you honor your husband, you shall be counted wise of all. Go ahead. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride. But if you dishonor your husband out of pride, sisters, go ahead. Shall be counted ungodly of all. You're going to be the worst type of woman. You know why, sisters? The Bible says 
A husband and wife for what, brothers? One flesh. So if she's dishonoring you, guess what she's also doing? She's dishonoring herself. Read the verse again. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. That's what God says. What verse was that? That was 26. Read on. Verse 27. A loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought out to drive away the enemy. So the only use for a big mouth woman is to drive out your enemy. When a bill collector call, put her on the phone. Scarecrow. That's the only you. See, you married a big mouth woman. Okay. So, next I'd like to address the religious hypocrite woman. This is the woman that quotes scripture. That Jezebel type. One who uses scriptures but does not believe the scripture. Give me the video. It's called Melanated by Melanated Multiverse. It's on Facebook. You can X out of that. We don't need this anymore. This is the video. Now, this is the Christian woman, the Hasidity, I know the scriptures woman. Watch this. The most interesting thing I saw in the compatibility test were your answers to what you wanted from a spouse wait, wait, and what you would give a spouse. Because I've never heard of Way to go. Right there, right there. So, woman this is before the marriage. What Judge Lynn, uh, what's her name? Taylor or Toller would do is have them take a. Some kind of test like the likes and dislikes, things of that nature. Go ahead, please. The most interesting thing I saw in the compatibility test were your answers to what you wanted from a spouse and what you would give a spouse. Because I've never heard a woman say it quite like this before. You said, I want my spouse to be the leader of our family, a good one, and in return, I will give him submission. Ooh. Now, which, if that's the way you want to roll, that's cool. But right here, I'm not seeing any of that. It seems that you're awfully in charge and dictatorial about what goes on in the home. Pause right there. Pause right there. Now, when you initially heard that she wants a man to be in charge, she will give submission. That all sounds good, brother. And believe me, that's what the majority of them will say. Majority of the sisters in this truth will say that. That's the right thing to say, but notice the follow-up. She said, but your actions... Show that you are dictatorial. What's the word she said? Dictatorial, meaning she's large and in charge. And when you, as we watch this, notice the countenance on the man. He's very soft-spoken. He's very uh, shy and introverted. I tell you, I always say little skinny brothers, but you shy, introvert brothers. Watch the loud sisters that want you. The reason she want you the reason she wants you is not because you're the most handsomest man on earth, so that she can control you, make you shut up, sit down, go over there. Play on. It seems that you're awfully in charge and dictatorial about what goes on in the home. And my question to you is, if you're looking for leadership, don't you have to back off the demands a bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. Yet you see no inconsistency between your behavior <laughs> and what you desire. Because I would really like to be able to put down the leadership thing and really let him pick it up. But that's why we're here, because I, I want to understand him. But I also want him to understand, too, that, you know, I would like to take care of business side first and then, you know, romance each other and, you know, do things like that. But I feel like I have to cue him on, like, hey, this is what's going on. He's like, yep. And I'm like, okay. okay, well, this is what you do. Well, I usually ask for a profession of love at this point. Just 15 seconds. What do you love about him? Um, in 15 seconds, what I love about him. I love that he makes me laugh. I love that he comes home uh, every night. I love that he keeps our Sunday traditions of going to church together as a family. I love that about him. Like, that's good. 15 seconds, right? That was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got 15 seconds. I, yeah. I love how my husband cares for me. He's always looking out for me. He worries about me. He does, you know, you talk about he comes home. He does go, go, to, be he goes to church. It's like, you know, there, it's nothing about his person that you love. Like, he's very endearing or entertaining. He's got a good heart. None of that. It's just he, he meets some of these checklist duties that you have for him. Isn't that what you heard? 
Yes. Well, so I don't here. have much right time. So I'm going to do what's on my heart. If I were your mother, I would tell you to step up and stand up. I would tell you, don't worry about pleasing her. I would tell you worrying about what you do and what you think is the right thing to do. Because she is running you. And she doesn't even like the fact that she is running you. But she can't seem to stop herself, so you need to stop her. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, step up, man up. She's just just running you and telling you what to do. I, I don't know how you take it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't disagree with some of the stuff that she says. It's just <laughs> the consistency of it. It's know? the way she says it. Yeah. Maybe hop to, it. hop to, hop to. Yeah. You know, if you want love, if you want romance, if you want it to be treated softly and well, you've got to be a little soft. You got to be a little romantic. You can't be a drill sergeant and wonder why he's not kissing you on the neck. Nobody wants to kiss a drill sergeant on the neck. That would be my <laughs> recommendation to you. Uh, I think you should get married. I'll give you your marriage license. I think you should get married, but you both need to work on yourselves in the manner I so designated. This matter is adjourned. That right there. So, nobody wants to kiss a drill sergeant, sisters. So you sisters that are large and in charge, Brothers don't like that thing. You want to be treated softly and kindly? Well, you got to be a little soft. In other words, you got to be a little, what's the word? Feminine. Some of you need to go to a charm school and learn that thing. How to be feminine? Some of you don't know that thing. Um, give me Proverbs 31. Now, what the judge said, she said, if I was your mama, I would tell you A, B, C, and D. Guess what? That's what a mother's supposed to do. Proverbs 31, that's exactly what happened to Lemuel, which was another name. I think some books say it was a nickname for Solomon. Proverbs 31, jump down, I think it's verse 4 or 6, where she says, is it for the kings to, I'm not looking. Verse 4. Is verse okay, four. you got me? Go ahead. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 4. It is not for kings. Wait, oh, start at verse 1. Let me hear 1. Verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that, is his, that his mother taught him. The prophecy that his mama taught him. So that's why the judge said, if I was your mother, this is what I would instruct you to do. That's what a mother's supposed to instruct the son, what to look for in a woman, how to conduct yourself as a man. Well, that goes for the father's part. But a mother's supposed to know that stuff too. Now jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for wait, kings. Wait, wait, wait. Three. Verse three. Give not thy strength unto women. That's what some of you brothers do. The Bible says give not your strength unto women. Remember, watch this. Give, hold that, hold that. Give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. Give not your strength unto women. Some of you brothers fall in love and lose yourself in the VJJ. You're just gone. <laughs> the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 8 for the man is not of the woman in creation man was not made from the woman go ahead but the woman of the man the woman was made from Adam go ahead Paul is saying don't forget that watch this neither was the man created for the woman see this is how you lose yourselves brothers you don't you forget this Neither was what? Neither was the man created. Neither was the man created for the woman. You brothers was not created to serve her. I'm gonna say it again. You men were not created to serve her. You were created to serve the Lord of heaven and earth. Read. But the woman for the man. The woman. I know you. You women in your Negro pen state of mind don't want to hear this. God says the reason He made her was for you. The Lord says the reason he made her was to serve you. And the reason he made you and me was to serve him. That's what 1 Corinthians 11 is talking about. But for some reason here in Babylon, we get it twisted. We get it backwards. Now, it might be because of our bad upbringing. Or it might be because you got a drill sergeant for a wife. And you don't know how to deal with us. So read it again. The book of 1 Corinthians of... Chapter 11, verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Go to Proverbs 31 again and verse 3. 
Proverbs chapter 31, verse 3. Give not thy strength unto women. It's saying the same thing. Give not your strength to women. Don't give yourself over. Your strength belongs to the Lord. You are to follow the Lord. She's supposed to follow you. But for some reason, it gets twisted. Now you're following her. Shut up, Tyrone. Go over there and sit down, Tyrone. Eat this, Tyrone. The hell is wrong with Tyrone? Hey, another way you brothers give your strength to a woman is you going and moving with a woman and living in that woman's house. Right. You understand? You got, you got brothers moving in with sisters, living in the, in the woman's house, and they can't tell the woman nothing. She, she get upset. She putting them out. You got to go. You got to leave my house. Right. You understand? Stuff like that you hear. So when you go and you live with a woman, you're giving her your strength. You understand? You can't say nothing. That's why you gain your ass whoop. You know who I'm talking about. Can't say <laughs> nothing. Now, I was talking with a sister. Brother said he's looking for a wife, so I saw some sisters that was his type. I called one sister up, and I said, Sis, what are you? I, I showed her a picture of the brother. She said, oh, he's handsome. I said, no, I didn't say the age. I don't, was you there with me? You was there. And I said, what are you looking for in a man? No, I said, how old are you? And she said, she gave the age, and she said she's looking for a man 10 years younger than her. Who can figure out why? Who can figure out why? Nobody knows why? Let me hear you. Right here. In, yeah, stand up. 10 years younger. Hmm. Uh, Shalom, Brother Josedek. Brother Josedek. She want to be domineering. She wants to be domineering. She wants to be that drill sergeant. She don't want a husband. She wants a boy toy. I'm going to say it again. She wants a boy toy. Somebody younger, inexperienced, don't know what, whether he's coming or going. She can say, Tyrone, shut up, sit down, go over there, lift your leg, do this. Go to the side now. Hold me back here, do this. Um, that's what she wants. I said, I'm talking, I said, she ain't ready for a husband. Because a husband's supposed to take the what? The lead. He's the head of that. She don't want that. In her talk alone, she didn't know what I was asking her. I said, she's not ready for a husband. Her mind is still in Babylon, okay? Give me Sirach. No, no. Go back to Proverbs 31 and jump down to verse 10. Remember, Proverbs 31 is a woman speaking, the mother of King Lemuel, Solomon. Read. The book of Proverbs. Bishop, Bishop you, uh, yeah, like you said, the proverb is a woman who's speaking, who giving woman the instruction how to be a woman as well. And also is teaching the son uh, how to be a man. You understand? To deal with a woman. Exactly. It's both ways. Uh, yes. She's telling her son what to look for in a woman. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. When it says no need of spoil, he ain't worried who she talking to. Is she having sex with somebody else? Is she texting someone else? Oh, God. Gee. He ain't worried about that. The mother taught him to find a virtuous woman. That's above gold. A woman who you can trust, she could go to the other side of the earth. You ain't worried about her. She's good. Because why? You have proven her to be a virtuous woman. To have her head in these scriptures. Read on. Verse 11. Verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. But some of you brothers, you hook up with a, a, a round the way girl. You get hooked up with a skank. Now she go around the corner. Her mouth is open talking about, hey, the hell is this? Read on. Verse 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. And guess what? She got skills. Some of you brothers marry these women who got no skills. You get sick, Lord forbid, and can't work, she can't help you. She has no skills to bring no type of income into the house. What you want a woman like that for? Because I saw a brother, he was, he was at IHOP, and he was walking with a cane, and he had a bad, I don't know, it looked like he got hit, but he could barely walk. And I watched the wife walk ahead of him and get in the car and sit there. Mm. And it was so bad, I wanted to help the brother, and he looked like he was about to fall. I said, wow, this brother's jacked up. And I thought to myself, Lord forbid I get in a situation like that where I can't do for myself and got to depend on the wife. But guess what? 
My wife got skills, so I'm not worried about it. But what about you? Does your wife got any kind of skills that if something happened to you, she can say, I got this. I got you, babe. And she ain't running out on you. Okay? Hey, hey Ella, her, her, squir- her skills is to twerk. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. I can make it clap. Hey. <laughs> Nobody want to see you make it clap. the hell is this? That's why he married her, right? Okay. Give me um, 1 Kings 21 and verse 4. So the drill sergeant wife, she always looks for that weak, misunderstood, mealy mouth brother. She don't want the brother her around her age or a little older. Oh, no. She wants the brother younger than her, softer than her. She's that drill sergeant woman. Okay? So, and that's a Jezebel spirit. And a Jezebel generally looks for an Ahab. Jezebel is a type of drill sergeant. She's quick on the draw. She's always large and in charge. And Ahab is always very soft and shy and an introvert. Read that. The book of 1 Kings chapter 21 and verse 4. And Ahab came into his house. Now Ahab was the king of Israel. He went into the house because he had just asked a dude for some property. The dude turned him down and said, no, I'm not giving you this property. It's been in my family. You can't have it. So now Ahab gets upset and goes into the house. Read on. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. Heavy and he was depressed. Go ahead. Because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid, and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face. Can you face. imagine a man like that? A weak, mealy mouth, misunderstood nooker. You so, weak, oh, I can't get my way. Now you're going to lay on the bed depressed. What kind of man is that? Read on. I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. You see the man, the mindset of this dude wouldn't even eat. He's so sad and depressed because he can't get his way. Go ahead. But Jezebel, his wife. Now watch. Here comes the drill sergeant. Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Why are you depressed, dude? Yo, dude, what's wrong with you? Go ahead. And he said unto her, because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. Watch this. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard Of Naboth the Jezreelite. She says, I will give you his vineyard. And when you read the entire history on this, this was a wicked woman. She set that brother up as a wicked man and had him put to death. That's the type of women some of you all marry. That drill sergeant woman. She takes no, she don't take no for an answer. You might because you that mealy mouth, a hush puppy brother, that church choir boy. And she looked for brothers like that. She looks through the congregation. Who's the weak brothers in here? Who I can control? You got to watch sisters like that. She don't want the brother that says, no, shut up, sit down, go over there. No, no, he's too rough. I don't want him. I don't want that guy. I want the brother that talks like this. Shalom, sister, how you doing? <laughs> That's who she want. The hell is this? You remember in Israel, there was two sisters that have promised their husband, I will give you your own congregation. Yes. You understand? Yes. Say, I will give you your own congregation. You have to follow these guys. Where they're at today, no way. Exactly. Look at Sirach 25 and 20. So every Jezebel looks for an Ahab, okay? So if you're that quiet, mealy mouth, uh, uh, a misunderstood brother, ask, and you got to ask her, why does she want me? Hmm. The but she's of- very controlling. And what's the word, dictatorial? Yeah, <laughs> dictator, whatever that word is. <laughs> She a dictatorship, Ella. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are the highway. <laughs> exactly. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 20. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. See that? A, ma- a woman that got a big mouth, always got something to say. She looks for that quiet brother. And she's going to destroy your spirit. 
You can't get her to shut up. There's no such thing as quiet in the house. No such thing. And some of you get married and you regret that I rue the day I married this hoe. Because she don't shut up. She's always on me. Do this, do that, go over there. Hey, you know what? She's the type of woman, she'll go out someplace and say, when I get back, I want you to wash the dishes, do the laundry, uh, uh, clean the walls, by the way. Put up new curtains. Are you kidding me? You ain't Mr. Mom. And there have been sisters. Listen to what I'm about to say now. Women have written us and said, can my husband help me with the chores at home? And my answer is, that ain't my business. That's my second answer. My first answer is, hell no. That's my first answer. My second one is, that ain't my business. Give me the scripture in Timothy about the woman. Let her marry. Bear children. You know what I want? Guide the house, that one. So, brothers, do you ask the sisters to go to camp with you and read? Do you ask the sisters to hold posts for you when you're getting spit on and throwing stuff at, brothers? No! You don't ask her that, but she want to ask you, share the housework with me. Sister, that's your job. All you male chauvinist niggas up there. That's what they, some of them are thinking, you're a male chauvinist. No, sister, you're a feminist. I'm not a chauvinist at all. I'm going to give you scripture. That's all I can give you. So you're either going to go with what God says or with what the white man say. Read that for me. The book Where are we going? The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 14. Get mad if you want, sisters. Get mad. I don't care. You can write me 100. Some of them is typing right now. Go ahead. I will therefore that the younger women marry. All you young women get married. Go ahead. Bear children. You sisters have children. Don't, brothers... You hook up with a sister that says, I want to put my career first. Oh, okay. And the sister, here you are. You 40. She 45. She's talking about, I'm putting my career first. Hey, the t- the, uh, what's the term? The clock is ticking. Five more years. You got like five more years to pop out a baby. <laughs> Read that again. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, bear children. Guide the house. Guide the house is what we want. Guide the house means take care of the house. That's what that means. Take care of the house. That's the Lord speaking through our Paul. That ain't something we made up because we, we are. What's the word? You're a misogynist. You hate. No, we don't hate women. We love women. We're trying to set the nation back in order because the white man turned everything upside down. Now, brothers, I will say this. If your wife is sick and or ailing, she has a newborn. She cannot do certain things. Some women are on bed rest because they just had a baby. You know. You can either A, bring another sister in to help. You can pay the sister some money to take care of the house. Cook the food. Pay her some money to do it for you. Or then you have the choice if you want to do it yourself. The choice is yours. But I generally try to stay out of that. I don't like getting involved in male-female relationships when it comes to that. Like she'll say, can you tell him to give me some money? That ain't my job to tell him to give you more money. Sister, if you want more money, try speaking nice. Try being kind to him. <laughs> try be loving. Try being feminine. And you know, brothers, you get a wallet. You, your wife wants some money. Yeah, hold it. Give me a wallet. Give me a wallet. Give me a wallet. You got a wallet, lover? My wallet's way down in my pant leg. Okay, here you go. I'm, uh, how much you want? She go, well, I, I, what you got? Here you go. <laughs> now if you do right by the brother if you treat him so good you make him feel like king of the F and L he'll go like this take what you want I'm a, I gave you sisters a secret right there treat the man right he's going to say hey, take what you want take what you need but if you that drill sergeant he's going to be like mm, shit. <laughs> I'm telling you what are you going to say, Malachi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, this, this is another thing sisters be complaining for, you know. You know, brothers go, a brother might come home, he might take off his shoe, leave it there. You know, he might take off his, his jacket, drop it right there. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of sisters be complaining. Oh, he just got just clean. You just came and... Well, all you could do, sister, is just take it up and hang it up. That's it. That's it. Well, you got to yeah. argue with me. Argue, not me, but why you have to argue with the brother for, you know what I mean? Malachi, Yo, that's Malachi, not me, okay? I'll that's not that me. That's Malachi, not me, okay? I'll do that all day. That was when I was young, not right now, I but you yeah, understand what I'm saying. But listen, man, don't argue. 
Don't argue with the brother about that. Even when the dish with the dishes, right? The dishes, men, we, when I was a little kid, that was my job. My chore was to do the dishes. If the dishes wasn't done, I get my, my behind whoop. Me and Tobias, we got a whoop. And if it's our day to do dishes and dishes in the sink. Now, you all might have kids. Let the kids do the dishes. So what if I come home and put a plate in the sink? I eat and I, I shouldn't got to wash that plate. I got kids. Let them wash it or let the woman wash it. There you go. That's you know what I mean? No. Oh, I just did the dishes. You just leave the plate in the sink. Come on, man. And you do hard labor's work. Yeah. So Good job. Everybody can't do his job. So, but, I know I ain't doing it. But <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Sisters, you all, you all don't, you know, when things like that, you know, you all don't bug out the butt over. Just pick it up. Send a Just simple right. thing like that. He comes home. He's hot. He's sweaty from a hard day's work. He might take his socks off. They stink. They sweaty. He throws them. <laughs> they sticks to the wall. <laughs> he takes his drawers off. He throws them. <laughs> they stick to the ceiling. Peel them off and wash them. That's all. That's all you can do. That's it. He come home. We come home hot from a hot day's of work. We want a bath. We want good food. And we want the S word. You know what we want. That's, right. That's it. That's all we want. We're not hard to understand. That's all we want. But you don't listen to me when I talk. We do listen to you. When you're quiet, we listen. Don't say nothing, I listen. <laughs> Give me Sirach 2614. We don't want to come home to a pile of bills. We don't like that, sis. We don't like that. The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You see that? Some brothers, you don't know what that is. Your wife is blah, 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 blah. Shut up, sit down, go over there, turn the channel. You ever cut on the TV and she go, all the it's too loud. Turn it down, Tyrone. You kidding me? I turn the damn TV where I want it. The hell is this? But you, brother, yes, dear. The hell is this? Did you finish that? <laughs> A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. A silent woman is a gift from God. So, brothers, when you're proving her, you want to see if she's quiet, a quiet type of sister, or she that loud mouth, know-it-all type of a sister. Give me Sirach 3318. There's more on it. Oh, there's more? Good. There's What's more. the rest? And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. She's been instructed in the scriptures not to be a drill sergeant. She's been instructed in the word of God to be quiet, meek, and loving. That's the type of woman you want. You want that type of woman who got skills that if something go down, she can handle the family. That's what you want. We've given you brothers and you sisters keys on things to look for. Prove each other. Read that, Sirach 33 and 18 down. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 18. Hear me. O ye great men of the people, and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. And, not, and give not thy goods to another, lest it repent thee, and thou entreat for the same again. Well, As you know what he's saying? Keep to yourself the leadership. This is an instruction to men. Keep to yourself the leadership position in your home. Do not make or have the wife as the leader or your child as the leader. That's what he's saying. Read on. Verse, nine, verse 20. As long as thou livest and hast breath in thee, give not thyself over to any. Now, or anybody. It might be a friend. Don't give your friend power over the relationship. Sisters, I got to say this to you. In Christianity, you know what women do? How they give the pastor power over the family. I'm going to go ask the pastor what the pastor say about it because this ain't right. And they go to the Christian pastor and get the pastor to call and browbeat the husband to get him to do what she wants. We don't roll like that in Israel, sis. I'm sorry. If it ain't sin, we're not getting involved at all. Okay? I'm going to say it again. If it ain't sin, we're not getting involved. We're not going to tell your husband how to run the house. That's his house. That's his, he is Lord of his house. That's it. Right, because Ella, a lot of sisters, they does that. A lot of time when they get into problems with their husbands, they call us up. All right, they call up, they call up the deacons, and you know, some, um, sometimes when we get involved, we say, okay, let me counsel them. It's, it might be a little say, okay, I'm counseling them. No, the same thing her husband told her. I'm telling her, 
but she don't want to listen to her husband, but she listening to what I said. That's why I stopped counseling y'all, man. Y'all don't call me for no counsel unless the brother evil. That's the only time I'm going to step in. The brother doing some evil or something like that. Otherwise, don't call me for no counsel because a lot of times the same things what we telling y'all is what your husband telling y'all. But what it is is that y'all don't respect your husband and you're putting us over your husband when we are not your head. Your husband is your head, not the deacons, not the officers. You understand? We not you sister's head. The brothers that you're married to, that's your head. Now you single sisters, we are your head. You single sisters, you all need advice. But I'm talking about you married sisters. You understand? Your head is your husband. All right? And a brother feel very disrespect, disrespected when you all go above his head and come to us. You know, a brother, it, 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 he feels disrespected. So you sisters, you all stop doing that, man. Exactly. What verse we at? That was verse 20. That was verse 19. I'm read sorry, on. 20. That was 20. Okay, read on. Verse 21. For better it is that thy children should seek should seek to thee than thou should seek to should stand to their courtesy. So your children are supposed to come to you as the father, not the other way around. Go ahead. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Read that again. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Have the preeminence in your house, brothers. You sisters should not want a man that does not have preeminence. That was a problem with the last uh Show we just saw. She said, I want to take charge, man. A brother that takes leadership, but he ain't like that. Sister, you knew he wasn't like that when y'all were courting, when you was talking to him. You knew he was soft-spoken. You knew he was an introvert. You had to pull things out of him just to get him to talk. That's not a brother that's marriage material. Not yet. Not yet. So you sisters, listen good. You got these soft-spoken cats up in here? They're not ready yet. They still talk like this. Shalom. They can't even look you in the face. Shalom, sister, how you doing? Uh, he would have bowed his head to you. What the hell is this? It's crazy. Bishop, and what you said, can you read that scripture one more time? Uh, Sirach, chapter 33, verse 22. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. The preeminence mean you call the shots. What happens a lot of times is in the courting stage, you're giving all the demands to whatever the woman wants. You're telling her, yes, dear, okay, dear, yes, dear. Then when y'all in real life, relationship, marriage time, and things ain't working for you, now you want to take things back. And she's like, hell no. We started off this relationship with me running you, and it's staying that way. That's what it means by, in all thy works, keep to thyself preeminence. I've seen brother move where the woman want, work where the woman want him to work. Give them all the money over to the woman, okay? And then when real life issues start falling apart and he's trying to take control, the woman, you already gave her control in the beginning. She ain't giving it back up. So now it's war going on in the house over foolishness that you should have established, like the bishop said, while courting. While courting, not when real life marital issues are going down, and now you're trying to negotiate stuff. And because you came in like a sucker, and she want to keep you like a sucker, now there's war going on. I'm going to get you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> we see that all the time. And you can't renegotiate the deal, because she already signed it with her vagina. <laughs> all right? And you know that's why you gave in time. You let her get everything she wanted because you was desperate for it. So in the scriptures say, keep to thyself preeminence. You work out all these things before, even with the kids. You let her know when I come in that house, if you got kids, the kids are going to listen to me. We're going to do this. This is how we're going to raise them. I deal with this and deal with them. I don't want to hear nothing from you. If she don't want that, then don't sign a deal. Keep your thing in your pants. That's right. I hope you all listening. Read that again. Sirach 33, verse 22. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Leave, leave not a stain in thine honor. When you don't have the preeminence, brothers, you leave a stain to your honor. There was a big muscle-bound brother at 10 a.m. Y'all remember what I'm talking about? His wife would be in the back. Big muscle. Uh, that's you big brothers. Y'all make us laugh. Because you be bad around brothers. Oh, but dude, here's somebody. But the woman's looking mean at you. And she go, mm. And here go Tyrone, yes, dear. Or she throws a baby in his lap while we counseling. Remember that? The hell is this? Yes. We counseling. We going to war. Get that baby back to the woman. The hell is 
<laughs> okay, brother. Mr. Mom. The hell is this? Hey, but this brother had a bad name, though, and he was he was a big brother, too. He wasn't no small dude, but his wife was running him. Yes. You know? Yes, exactly. Read on. Verse 23. At the time when thou shalt end thy days. Meaning and die, when you're about to die. And finish thy life. Mm -hmm. Distribute thine inheritance. Distribute thine inheritance. Okay. So, next as we close out, I'd like to discuss uh, the selfish type of love. Which is a narcissistic me, me, me type of love. That type of love where I have three best friends, me, myself, and I, and to hell with you. Okay? So, give me the video about the selfish woman. It's called Selfish Woman, I believe. Divorce Court. After 10 years of marriage, Camila Jackson says she's divorcing Carlos Jackson because he refuses to take care of her. Um, I believe that the woman who came up with women's lip, I like to meet her so that I can choke her because I do not want to work. I don't want the same rights as my husband. He's the provider, the sole provider. You and I want the same rights. Married. No, Your Honor, I do when not want the same married, rights. she was working. You believe that women shouldn't have the same rights or do you just believe that women shouldn't have the same obligations? The same rights. 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 I feel like a woman's place is in the house. My, my place is in the house. I'm a desperate housewife of Texas. I claim that. You know why? Because I, I feel like I should sit at home, get my hair done, get my nails done, be able to go to the tanning salon because that's, I do enjoy tanning. Being a woman is about getting pampered, Carlos. If you no, realize that, it. we wouldn't that's be here today. It. So if your, husband, if your husband is, is the provider, he can tell you what to buy and what not to buy. You don't believe in that, do you? Absolutely not. I, you know, well, being a woman has that's put, not what you think. Carlos refuses to get a second job so that I can have the things that to me. I don't need a second me. job. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. Your Honor, a third I work, job. I work he can 12 get a third hours job. a day. I, would, I wouldn't mind working if they didn't want you to stay till 5 o'clock. You know, I got things to do during the day. I got things to do. They want you to come in at 9, stay till 5. That's interrupting my daily schedule. I like to be able to... <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. You know, I go get my nails done, get my hair done, go tanning. Ever since she has gotten a boob job, I don't know who she is anymore. Your Honor, on, on the defense of my boobs, I love my boobs. They're all mine. And I'm gonna get them bigger. And as soon as I can pick the money out of his pocket, I'm gonna get them about two sizes bigger. And she don't do anything. I come home from work. I go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. I come home by 8 o'clock at night. I gotta come home. I gotta cook something to eat. The kids standing around wondering uh, who's gonna fix something to eat. Well, maybe Dad, if he gave me more something? money, I would cook. Mrs. Mrs. Jackson, I feel like to Mrs. Jackson, you mean to tell me this man goes to work all day long and he's got to come home and cook and clean because you in getting a tan and drinking Bloody Mary? Yeah. Your Honor, this man goes to work all day, and he has to come home and cook sometimes because he will not make enough money to get a cook, because I'm not a cook. <laughs> get a cook. To get a cook. Get, it, we can it, have it, those it things. We this, can, get, we can have dinner ready, with. but I, he needs to get somebody to prepare that. Yeah, I'm you know busy. What? He's not Here taking you. care of me. What, what do you believe that you are contributing to the marital situation? I mean, everybody's got to put something on the table in a marriage. What are you providing to him? He's married to me. What, what, what is this? this? He's married to me. <laughs> I was on the internet and I talked to an old friend. And Carlos on had Facebook, a heart attack. Whenever they old, bring out the quotes, boyfriend. I know we're in trouble. Yeah, that uh, old friend. Yeah. No, I said, you know, I said a few things and Carlos took them out of context and he told my sons that. What things did you, he take out of context? Well, it was just like, you know, I really, you know, like the fact that you're my old friend. What? You know? No. Yeah. She was flirting and acting a fool yeah, on the basically internet. basically flirting, and I let my, my sons know that uh, I was going to be leaving the house, and me and mom were going to be breaking up because Mrs. Jackson, she was something that minor. Mrs. Jackson, were you, trying to, uh, were you trying to trade up? Absolutely not. Did, did this guy have more money than him? I wouldn't say that, but what I will say is that How do you know how much money you got in it? You shouldn't even know. Mr. Jackson, tell me wh why you want $3,400, sir. I went to work one morning. After work, I came home. When I came home, my wife was laid up in the bed. I come look at, I look at her as soon as I come in the bedroom, and I see, like, twins sitting on her chest. I'm like, what is this? Uh, I, 
I had surgery today. <laughs> and I'm like, what are, you, what, what are you talking about? She went and had day surgery, breast augmentation while I was at work. Didn't sure tell did. me nothing about it. I, I didn't sure even did. know she did this. So you went out Spent the and whole got new breasts check. while he was at work. But I've been telling him for several years that she wanted, that I'm, and I I've been get telling him. her no. And I knew that if and I've if been I telling ask you no. him, I've been see, telling you if you not ask to him, he's going to say no. So when you don't ask, it's like an automatic yes, you know. So I went out, Mr. Jackson. So and and you're telling me that she got the money for this bre breast augmentation from income your tax. income tax yeah. return. She filed. Was them it a joint return? Me. Yeah, she filed them without me though, but it was a joint return. And I, I don't work, and so I feel like any extra money in the house should come to me. The money was work, supposed so to be mine. The extra money should right. come to me. He works. He gets the money. Your Honor, I have to be afforded something. You so he's income. in charge of income, and you're in charge of outgo. <laughs> exactly. That's how, that's yeah. how your house Isn't works. Isn't that the way it is? So I think I do. dollars in favor of Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Your so Honor. Ordered. Thank you. All right. So you brothers that marries that narcissistic, selfish type of a woman, Give me Sirach 22 and 4. How many brothers would like a woman like that? I don't care how lovely she is on the outside. And that uh, plastic surgery stuff, you know, them titty uh, breast things. You know when she gets that, she can't breastfeed the kids. And breast milk is the best milk. Y'all know that, right? Yep. She got to use Infamils and all that other stuff. All the chemical stuff. Because she want to look good on the outside. Not for you. She don't want to look good for you, because she got you already. She want to look good for Tyrone. That's right. <laughs> Th those breasts is, is, is not for her husband. They for them niggers in the world. There you go. That's exactly. all them breasts is, is for. There you go. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 22 and verse 4. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. See that? A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. She's bringing something to the marriage. She ain't talking about all I could do is make it clap, look at my size 34 Ds. She got more. This type of sister. Read again. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband, but she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. See that? But she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. That's the type of woman you don't want. You don't want that type of woman. So finally. I want to discuss, this is the last case, I want to discuss the big horny sisters out there. Generally, she's older, and she wants a, 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 she wants a toy that she can play with at home. Give me the video. Give me the video. The sexy sister. Right there. There she go. There she go. Lovely sister. Now, everybody, and we all got certain types. Some brothers, you like them big. Some brothers, you like them skinny. Sisters, too. Some sisters like big brothers. Some sisters like little skinny brothers. Some brothers like light skin, dark skin. Same with Everybody has a type. So this is his type. Now let's roll the tape. First time I had sex, I called my mother. And my mother told me, you better get your candles. You better get your music. You make it a night, you know. So night to remember. Yeah, a night to remember. So every time, it's always a big production. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't come to me all boring and stuff like that. He only want to do missionary. What are you talking about? I don't know I'm a big girl. I want to ride the wave sometimes myself. <laughs> she said she want to ride the wave too. All you do is missionary. So, now, for you sisters that get their born brother in the bed, it's shame on you. Now, go back to the beginning. <laughs> some brothers, now, sisters, some brothers here are virgins. Now, you shouldn't look frown on that. That may be a good thing. But you brothers, if you are a virgin, I wouldn't advise you get around the way girl. You want a virgin too. That way you can both experiment and learn life together you don't want her telling you put your leg over here do it like this shut up sit down put your mouth here hum on it mm. on. you don't want that don't tell me what to do in bed mm. she telling him how weak he is bishop yeah <laughs> on, play that again so this is the problem with the sister here the first time I had sex, I called my 
my mother. And my mother told me, you better get your candles. You better get your music. You make it a night, you know. So night I, to remember. Yeah, a night to remember. So every time, it's always a big production. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't come to me all boring and stuff like that. He only want to do missionary. What are you talking about? I don't know I'm a big girl. I want to ride the wave sometimes myself. Riding the ways, riding the ways, like okay. Now everybody likes to smash. Everybody likes to smash, but everybody don't like to get crushed. Now see all. Now come on, come on, now come on. Wait, wait. 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 <laughs> everybody likes to smash, but don't everybody like to get crushed? Now that's some funny stuff. Go back a few seconds. Listen good. Listen, I want y'all to listen good to this. To smash, but everybody don't like to get crushed. Now see all. Now come on, come on, now come on. Let's just keep it real. We we'll put it all out here. Let's go ahead and put it out here. Now she is. Now she says she a kinky girl. She always want to come to me. Let's do something different. Now to me, I, you know, you think it's something different. So that, to me, I say. I want to hurt you, go along with it. So she's getting on top of me. I say, come on, let's go, let's do this, whatever. And she's just up there, she's just up there, just going. She said, you know you're like this. Why are you so quiet? Say something to me. Say something, say something. I say, I say, I'm just trying Wait, to- Wait, stop, stop, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some sisters, brother, they, they get it in. And they like to talk dirty. If you're one of those introvert brothers, don't talk, it's going to, don't get a sister that likes to talk like that. Go back a few seconds. Go back a few seconds. Look at her face. She mad as hell. She, what the hell is this? Go ahead. So she's getting on top of me. I say, come on, let's go. Let's do this, whatever. And she's just up there. She's just up there, just going. She said, you know you're like this. Why are you so quiet? Say something to me. Say something. Say something. I say, I say, I'm just trying to breathe. <laughs> I said, hey, stop. She always stop. talking to I'm just trying to breathe. Now, go back a few seconds. Some of you brothers, you do like, big girls like to get it in. So if you, if you uh, sister, I suggest you get a strong brother. You big, bounded, get a strong brother that can lift you up and throw you around. Don't get those little small brothers. They can't breathe, I'm just telling you, they can't breathe. Go ahead. I say, I say, I'm just trying to breathe. <laughs> I said, hey, now she always talking to her friends and everything, talking about, hey, what's new, what's the deal, this, do this, this. She came to me and she said, let's try something different. Again, let me hurt you, go along with it. I said, okay, let's do this, what you got? She come out there with this, this tight black thing on, whatever, and you know, with the little whatever. She come out there, she, she tied me up, and I'm thinking, you know, just back like that this way. or something. And she, and be, she, be she, she like, it's like this or whatever. I'm like, okay, this is bad. <laughs> this is real bad. Then she got the blindfold on. I'm like, what the? Right. And, and I say, don't we need a safe word or something? A safe word? She say, she say, call me Queen Kitty. She with me like the grandma. She say, call me that. Call me. Call me. I'm like, oh, oh, stop. God. Now, Some of y'all be kinky like that. Y'all like to get hit. I don't like to, don't hit me. I don't like that. Some of y'all like to get down like that. You got to find somebody compatible with you that likes that type of stuff. Go back a few seconds. We almost done. We almost done. Call me, what you say? Call me queen what? Candy queen candy. The hell is this? Candy. With a mask on. Wow. Damn. And I'm thinking, you know, just back like <laughs> this way. or something. And she, and be, she, be she, she like, it's like this or whatever. I'm like, okay, this is bad. <laughs> this is real bad. Then she got the blindfold on. I'm like, what the? Right. And, and I say, don't we need a safe word or something? A safe word? She say, she say, call me Queen Kitty. She with me like the grandma. She say, call me that. Call me. Call me. 
really are like, oh my God. Now, Ms. Ms. Little, were you whipping your man, asking him to call you Queen Kitty? <laughs> you know you did it, you know you did it. Let's move on to another topic. So, well, all righty then. So, today's class, we discuss several types of marriage mistakes and how to avoid those types of marriages. We talked about the paranoid ma uh, marriage. We talked about the revenge type of marriage. We talked about, what else did we talk about? I'll be forgetting. The selfish one, and what else did we talk The anger issues? Mania. Mania, thank you. We talked about the selfish wife in brief. Uh, and now we talked about the kinky sister. So there's all kinds, and it, the, the list goes on and on. You know, you could talk about marriage t till Christ come back. The topic never gets old. But I pray that you brothers and sisters can glean something from today's lesson, apply it, what we went over, meditate on, and make sure you don't fall into the same mistakes that many others have fallen into. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.